<laughs> How's everybody doing? <coughs> I had to do a subliminal message. You saw it, now I removed it. <coughs> no, no. Subliminal, that's what I'm trying to do. Mary Kay. Anyway, to, how's everybody doing, by the way? We are going to do now um, Gemini and Libra. <coughs> I was smoking a little joint. That's why I'm like, I'm cough. Because they went down the wrong windpipe. <laughs> but anyway, this is for LaVon Crossley. This is for you. So I'm doing compatibility of sign Libra and Gemini. Cardinal air and mutable air. <coughs> We're dealing with air and air, which in sacred geometry, it is a trine, which means that it is a good aspect, it is a positive aspect. You got the two elements working together. We call that a trine, and that's 120 degrees versus an elemental square, which is 90 degrees, which is usually two conflicting elements which marks then the incompatibility of signs. But in this case, we're dealing with compatibility. We're dealing with air. Now, you know, we know how we do. We are going to begin with nature. Where do we find this combination in nature? Well, you heard me describe the Leo, which is the sun, and you've uh, heard me describe Libra, our ozone layer, as one example. I can use other examples of nature. <coughs> <coughs> when we're dealing with Gemini, we're dealing with mutable air. So, in that respect, we have to ascribe Gemini, when it comes to a reference in nature, to weather patterns. Gemini rules weather patterns. One day is 70 degrees, one day is 50. One day is below zero, one day there's hailstorms falling. One day is sunny, the next day is snowing. We don't know the times from the seasons. That's Gemini, mutable air. We don't know what season we're in because Due to climate change, we don't know if we're in spring, summer, winter, or fall. They're all kind of blending. It says in the Bible, when the Son of Man cometh, man shall not know the times from the seasons. That's creepy. Because that's happening now. That's happening now. We don't know the time from the seasons. The other day, it was 70 degrees, and then it jumped to fucking 40 degrees. How does that happen? That never happened in my lifetime until now. Our atmosphere is in trouble, folks. So Gemini represents mutable air, which symbolizes our weather patterns, our electric magnetic grid on the Earth, micro changes in air density, radio waves, sound waves, and all other kinds of vibrational frequencies that we, that's of our human awareness and those that are not. Those that animals can hear and sense, or insects. You know, when there's an earthquake, you know when there's an earthquake, when all of a sudden you see ants and worms coming out of the ground. They've done studies on this. And then two or three days later, there's a major earthquake. Well, the worms and the ants already knew it, which is why they were coming up the surface. See, nature has a way of telling you what's going on. We're the ones that are not paying attention. Thank God for anthropologists, because we are the record keepers. And we, we, we write these things down. It's such a Virgo job, isn't it? <laughs> well, again, we have to ascribe um, Gemini to fluctuating or changing weather patterns, or also the changings of the seasons, winter, spring, summer, fall. 
because there's a different atmosphere with every season and a different change in the topography of nature. So that's Gemini, mutable air. So how do we ascribe this to the human personality and ego? Well, Gemini's changeable moods and behaviors. So, I mean, that was easy. That's a no-brainer. So what will Libra be ascribed to in nature? It won't be the ozone layer in disrespect. Because the ozone layer protects us from the sun. So when we did Leo Libra, that was appropriate. Now we gotta use another example of nature ascribed to Libra that is not of that uh, model. And that will be then the actual seasons themselves. Winter is ruled by Capricorn, a cardinal sign. Spring, Aries, a cardinal sign. Summer, which is Cancer, a cardinal sign. And then fall, which is Libra, a cardinal sign. And the highest of all the cardinal, all the cardinal signs. The intellect of God himself. Libra represents that. So therefore, she's the highest of the cardinal signs. Even though a Capricorn is in the sacred geometry and alchemy points north. And it is the, the pentagram or the star of David. No, actually the star of Solomon, because David is six pointed star, the seal of Solomon is five pointed star. It is the it is the sign of the magician and, and, and well, you know, witchcraft and you know, uh, Wicca or whatever you want to call it, magic, you know, that I wear. The name of Yahweh or Jehovah. You know? But of course this symbol is far older in antiquity than than, than the Hellenistic period in which it was ascribed then to the Israelite God of Jehovah or Yahweh. This symbol is far older than that. Far older than that. So in that respect, um, Libra represents the changing, the, it represents the seasons themselves, while Gemini represents the changing of the seasons. Are we clear? So, they're almost inseparable. Because a change in the season will require a change in the topography, temperature, and atmosphere of the planet, which is Gemini. So they're kind of interlocked. This is why we con we consider Libra and uh, Gemini compatibility of signs. They work well together. They do. They do. So, we're going to jump right in. I know I haven't said that in a while, right? And we are going to um, begin our analysis of um, Libra and Gemini and compatibility of signs. Let's open up. Okay. Now, the first thing that we have to discuss is that, you know, two air signs together tend to create a whirlwind. Now, you know what I mean by that. You know, you have two winds coming from opposite direction, each one having separate temperature gradients. When they collide, what do you think is going to happen? Either two things. Either they'll cancel each other out, or they will create a fierce tornado. Or a fierce hurricane, if it happens in the ocean. Or typhoon, if it happens in the Indian Ocean. Right? So when you have two powerful air gradients, or air currents, or air pockets collide, you have... A freak, freaky dick, freaky dick, a freak of nature occur. What we call tornadoes and hurricanes and natural disasters. But these are just conventing, conventing currents. And 
congruencies as much as people might think it's incongruent of things of these anomalies to occur in nature. There are still many things in nature that we cannot explain, that we don't know what to define, like the Bermuda Triangle. Planes have been disappearing a millennia from the air. Ships have disappeared underwater. Strange anomalies occur in certain islands that are near the Bermuda Triangle, like the Bahamas and Puerto Rico, which happen to be one of the points of the triangle. Mm. And I've been to Puerto Rico, and there's some strange stuff that go on there. And I've seen extraterrestrials. You know, we have one of the biggest radio telescopes in the world in Puerto Rico, pointing to God knows what and what's reporting back to us. Okay, so understand that these are complexities and mysteries of nature, which Gemini represents. But so does nature. So does nature. Many people really don't know why we have the seasons. People don't realize that the reason that we have the seasons is because our Earth is tilted 23.5 degrees. Our Earth is not like 180 or zero. It's tilted. And that tilt of our planet is what creates the seasons. I have to know that. So it is the physical anomaly of our planet that's tilted a certain way that defines our atmosphere and therefore our survival. So, we ascribe survival instincts and intuitions, but more instinct, to the cardinal sign of Libra. Libra will survive, while Gemini will fold. The mutable signs usually fold before the cardinal signs, like kamikazes, go and die with a bang. Okay? So, just describing that, gives you an idea of the extremities of these two signs and the complexity of these two signs as well. So, even though they fall under the compatibility of signs, don't get it twisted. There's still much complexity and much to be desired, both intellectually and to the imagination when it comes to these two combinations. Like um, Leo and Libra, Libra and Gemini are also two institutions of their own right. And one won't respond to the other, even though they both can have a mutual understanding of each other or of the situation at hand. Both of them can have uh, a mutual commonality about them, but not necessarily be in agreement with each other. Both of them can know right from wrong, but that doesn't mean that they will exercise rightful judgment at the time that it's called for. Libra, we can put a sure bet that she would or he would. Gemini, forget about it. And I love Gemini, but come on, it's ruled by Mercury, and Mercury is changeable, and so is Gemini. So the inconsistency, you know, it, it's like when you see a cloud in, the, in a night, midsummer afternoon, and then that cloud disappears out of the blue. And all you see is blue, but you don't see the white cloud. And then all of a sudden you see it again. You know, that is how fickle our weather can be, and that's how fickle psychologically Gemini can be, whether they mean to or not. So, you know, Compatibility of sign with this combination is, is really a misnomer because it can it can go either way and with this combination more than any other combination there are so many factors that now have to be put in the equation so that we can have a semblance of uh, uh, of something that maybe we can use as a tool to predict. But when you're dealing with a combination with Gemini and Libra, both signs are highly complex. 
So, you know, and they don't mind going to life without a roadmap or even defining what they are or where they're going. And if they're not going to do the if they're not going to do that for themselves, how are they going to do that for the partner? Especially when we're talking about Gemini. Because at least with Libra, Libra will adapt to the partner. And be all that she can be to mirror the expectations of the partner. She will be whatever the partner desires in a partner. Gemini is not going to do that. Gemini is not going to do that. She's going to march to the beat of her own drum. So, how would this work? And why would this be called compatibility of sign? Well, we, we did. let's look at the um, the modality. We have a cardinal and a mutable. That can work. We have a 120 degree trine because it's two airs. That's excellent. That can work. So, oh, so far, the checkpoints is positive. The checkpoints is positive. So, technically, there shouldn't be a problem for this to be a, a congruent and harmonious compatibility of signs. <coughs> Here's the thing. The problem will not be so much Libra. It will be Gemini. Not that it is a problem, but Gemini is so complex. It is the sign of the twins. And depending on the age, the level of maturity, the sex, so many factors involved that there's no way to make a rightful judgment about how this combination will go. Not many astrologers will be able to define that. It has to be by case by case basis. But if I can put it in a certain way, I will say that this relationship is fresh, invigorating, is um, you know, edgy, you know, fast moving and always changing. And if you are comfortable with this dynamic, this mode of coexisting, then that would be great. The question is, how long will it last? Will it be the same when you were in your 20s, then you are in your 30s or 40s? Will other priorities take over? And how will you handle crisis? And will crisis change you, or embitter you, or traumatize you, or stagnate you? See, this is a very delicate combination. And it's very easy for this combination to just, you know, like when you're bowling, you throw the ball and it hits all, all the, uh, it, it knocks out all the pins. It's very easy for this combination to be knocked out of its feet, either by enemies externally or from within. A lot is required of maturity, self-awareness, and a willingness for the idealist and the communicator to find a, a common or create a platform where they can meet a common ground. I will tell you that that probably is not going to occur when you're below 30. This is one of those combinations where that has to occur when you're above 30, past 30. Where there has to be enough psychological self-awareness where you can mitigate the shadow and therefore control the lower nature of every ego that exists. Because we all have a lower nature and a higher nature. The more unaware we are psychologically, the more power our lower nature gets. The more aware we become psychologically, the stronger our higher consciousness becomes and mitigates the, the vibrations of the lower nature of the ego. And understand that Libra and Gemini represents these dichotomies, these polarities and conflicting contradictions. It will have to be some kind of karma to bring these two people together. But because this combination does exist, 
Although you don't see it as common as you see more other compatibility of size combination, it is one that is considered rare and unique. And unique. You see? You have to understand also that uh, love compatibility, you know, uh, could be very fickle, can be very superficial. This will also be another situation of marriage with convenience. You see? Because, and, and so Libra can survive. Remember, we, we're talking about the movers and shakers of the Zodiac. It will be Gemini that will be the latch key. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, what, how do you survive a relationship that could have that kind of situation going on? It also depends on the type of relationship that you are involved in. Like I just did the series in the state of masochism and the counselor, counselee, student, teacher. I still got to finish the series in the state of masochism and do the self-sufficiency. No. And, and, and because those, you know, this is a relationship dynamic with Libra and Gemini that can easily become a mentally hostile or mentally abusive environment. Both of them know how to use the power of the mind. And they know how to use words as a weapon and as a way to effectuate change. Both sides can truly hurt each other and destroy everything and everyone around them if we're dealing with the unevolved type or the immature, either by age or because they have lacked a couple of preliminaries or a couple of steps in their psychological um, training and, uh, and, and upgrowing from childhood. You know, these things are important. These things are important, you know, and that's going to shape the psychology of the person. Someone with this combination that comes from poverty will have a different perspective on life than someone of the same combination coming from a middle class background or upper middle class or the very wealthy. These, all these factors have to be taken into account. Class, education, and knowing the rules of engagement that governs a, a civilized society in which we live in will make all the difference if this combination was to survive. And there has to be mutual respect as well. No. Libra can engage in manipulations to such a degree that it boggles the mind. But so can Gemini. So then you have to ask yourself, who's the boss? Who's the boss? So in a situation like we, when we're dealing with the, with the man who is Gemini and the woman is Libra, it will be the woman. The Gemini man will not want to be bothered with the daily mundane vicissitudes of life. He'd rather go out there and be in the streets doing the freaky. Uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know. So it'll have to be Libra to hold it down. And if we flip it, the Gemini woman will be the boss. By virtue of her being a woman, not so much for being a Gemini. But for being a woman. Because women hold it down. Men, not so much. It is what it is. So, how do you handle a combination like that? Again, a lot of it has to do, or has to deal with the fact that you have to make a choice and a decision very early if you want to invest the time and the energy 
if you see something that is worth pursuing. Otherwise, you got to take it with a grain of salt. And we're done with this combination. We're going to do part two in a little bit.